Welcome people of the World Wide Web and it's movie review time. So this week's review is for Creed 3. Uh, try and keep spoilers to the end. So if anybody who doesn't know, been living in the closet or anything, obviously this is a continuation of the Rocky franchise. Um, this is a Don the story of Adonis Creed, um, so Apollo Creed's son. And yeah, and this is the, uh, as far as I'm aware, third and possibly final in this, this new trilogy. Um, Stallone doesn't return for uh, personal reasons, or grievances and stuff he has. And, uh, but yeah, this is, so the story uh, as a rough um, outline is Adonis has his last fight. He retires. Um, his gym it basically trains the newer generation. Um, and while this is going on, you see a few, a few flashbacks of him as a child and his friend Damien. Uh, Damon, sorry. He um, goes to jail um, when they were kids, and obviously he only just gets out, and then obviously they meet up. Um, obviously Adonis, uh, Michael B. Jordan, obviously feels like he owes him a debt, and then for a set of circumstances... Um, his friend gets a title fight, wins, spoiler alert, you kind of see it in the trailers and then it's kind of a big head to head. That is the gist of where the story goes. Um, this is directed by Michael B. Jordan um, and I must say he, he, for a first time director, he did really well. Um, I know this is kind of the natural progression of Rocky films like Stallone, Rip. Um, help produce and all that the earlier ones and then he became a director so this is obviously Michael B. Jordan kind of going through the same same steps and yeah it, 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 I must admit it was a really good enjoyable film um, I went in with mediums like, it's another Creed film like with John Wick and everything you expect the same sort of thing not knowing he directed it and so my expectations were I would say middle of the field obviously a little bit that Rocky wasn't going to be in there, but in all fairness, this makes um, actually logical sense. Like this is very much a Creed film, and this is like the handing over. So you had the Rocky films, and then you had Creed One, which heavily starred Stallone, which is kind of passing the torch to Adonis. And obviously, he's not as as much of a role in the second one for obvious reasons. If you've not seen it, I don't want to say too much. And this one, he's not in it. To be honest, it, it leaves Adonis to stand on his own feet to kind of finish his trilogy and his legacy. And I think that is done really, really well. Um, right. Let's go with the spoiler review now. I'll start throwing stuff out and then I'll give you my reviews at the end. So, so obviously, so the story between him and Damon is actually there is a confrontation that happens. Um, you, you get to see this between flashbacks and you don't find the true kind of understanding of what happened until the very end of the film which it kept you guessing I mean I thought it was maybe going to be a bit more serious uh, not serious to say that what happened was actually a far worse not but basically Michael B Jordan he was because obviously he wasn't raised by Adonis he was raised uh, sorry Apollo he was raised by um, Apollo's wife later on but kind of discarded I can't remember all the details so apology if it's if I'm being a little too vague um, so he spends a few years in like a foster home and Damon is like his his friend. Um, and obviously they kind of grow up boxing together. Uh, Damon is the, is the better boxer, he's going to be the fighter. And, and uh, obviously Adonis, Michael B. Jordan's character, he's kind of the, um, I don't know, kind of coach that sits in a corner and stuff like this. And there obviously is promise. Um, but what happens is obviously when they're a kid, they both sneak out, go to this fight, um, Damon wins it, and then they go to a convenience store to spend some of the money. Um, as he's walking in, he sees this bloke, which he realises it was his foster father. He was the father figure of the foster home and unfortunately beat the kids up um, to the point it shocked him quite bad. Obviously Apollo Adonis, sorry, <laughs> two names confused. He goes by, notices him. Obviously, the bloke's coming out, I imagine, drinking or smoking, so obviously a bit inebriated. And, yeah, Adonis let's starts whacking into him. Um, in the process of this, two lads pull him off, um, who are obviously with the, the father um, character, or the foster father character. And as they're pulling him off, Damon gets out, pulls out a gun. Unfortunately, the cops pull up. 
Damien's got a few priors and he goes to jail. Adonis after this is kind of found, you know, he kind of moves or currently when when that story starts he is living with Adon Apollo Creed's wife so he has maybe a bit of a better life and kind of he goes on his separate journey Damon goes on jail time and that's where he sits so you can see from Adonis' side like he feels like he owes him you know it's you know Damon was only sticking up for his friend he didn't kill anybody or something yeah I'm not yeah say so I'm not you know um I'm not agreeing that you should point a gun at any any person at all, but sticking up for his friend, you know, maybe he shouldn't be, but obviously somebody who beats up on kids, you know, let that he needs to be the one that's put in jail, not Damon, but by the by. So yeah, it's a good story. I sort of keep it in, uh, you know, Adonis, if you mention things, he's not very open, but his wife kind of helps it bring out. But, I mean, you know, you have in this kind of, he ends on a high... And then obviously the apprentice. I mean, to be honest, the, the champion that um, Damon beats, uh, he, he, I expect him to be a bit. I'm not a greatest boxing fan and know everything about it, so I don't know um, if he was, you know, if he is your typical type of boxer because I don't really watch it, so it's it's hard to fan admit. But that guy, he seemed like an all right bloke, but didn't strike me as somebody who would be a champion. But yeah, what do I know? Um, that was the only little bit. Throughout the story, really loved the family features. So obviously, Tessa Thompson plays his wife. Really does really well with his family dynamic and with his deaf daughter. And I like the fact of, you know, she is deaf, but they incorporate a lot of sign language into this of how they talk. The fact that when people meet the family and the daughter, they are encouraged to use sign language. And I liked that little nod, that you know, the little thing of. You know, it's just to kind of open people's minds up to, you know, be accepting of that people are different. But, you know, rather than be like, oh, she's saying hi, how are you? And stuff like, no, no, let's teach you how to talk to her in a proper way. And I, I really liked that. I think that was very a subtle message that was left in. But I believe the girl who plays the daughter as well was also deaf in real life. Um, so it's really nice to actually see someone, uh, you know, it, it played as realistic as it could be, you know. I'm sure like, it could be played by other people, but I, I really like that. I so said the family dynamic and that worked really well when you saw like him being a dad and stuff. And I, I thought that was a nice kind of wholesome aspect to the film. So yeah, Michael B. Jordan, brilliant job. Um, box, I mean, the one thing that really, really impressed me with this film is the boxing side of it. Now, if you watch the Rocky films, you know, there's a lot of he'll swing nowhere near the person and they kind of go down. And that's, you know, even kind of the wrestling, you know, how it is scripted in a way and supposed to look like you don't really hit them. In this, I mean, there's CG and stuff used, I imagine, in places. But when the boxing's there and the camera angles and the way he uses, and Michael B. Jordan's quote, he uses um, some anime, some boxing anime stuff. And there are little bits you can see, kind of the, the knockout punches, you know, and maybe a little bit spectacular um, and may not be um, exactly accurate to real life but he's done really well I mean the boxing the camera how it's filmed and how the camera goes around with a person and stuff I thought really really well you could not tell what was CG what was not CG and it actually got you more involved within the fights and actually made it you know flow really well um, there's one bit at the at the end fight where they kind of have a kind of in a monologue where they're fighting in, in really like a, a kind of ring but there's kind of a metaphors in there and for me I was like that's a bit weird because you have round one and I think round one round two uh, and then this grid kind of turns up in this ring and then it's like round 12 and I'm like well where did the <laughs> where did like these 10 rounds go but I think it was metaphorical because you see of where they're getting pushed up against jail sets and stuff and it's all them internally reflecting but yeah for obviously where we got there so the basic story is obviously Damon comes out he tries to help him um, they go to a party somebody attacks um, not Creed um, oh, oh, I've forgotten his name now oh, um, so anyway, the champion, like I say, no, let's, let's go. so the champion, or the current reigning champion, he has a fight against Drago, that's it, Drago's son, uh, Dolph Lundgren's son, um, and that is where the fan is, um, they all go to a music concert kind of opening for a musician, and a bloke attacks, um, Ivo breaks his hands, 
and he can't fight. This is where then uh, Damon steps up to have a fight. It's kind of like his first of a fight. You know, he was a good boxer when he was a kid. So they get in the pages and he absolutely destroys the guy. You know, knocks him on the canvas, puts him, pro you suspect quite bad. You see him at the end fight, but... And then it's this and um, Creed coming to realisation from his mother that Damon did say earlier and like he'd write him and he never got that is that his mum was basically trying to keep him distance. She thought he was a bad influence. And you realise of when she read the notes and pictures that the whole Drago, how he got into was actually a mate of Damon. Like he has kind of been orchestrating this all behind the scenes. And Jonathan Mayers, this is what I was hoping to see from Kang the Conqueror. And... I mean, he is well built, and maybe that's part of he seems quite menacing, but he portrays kind of a nice bad guy, if if that even makes sense. And I was like, actually, if this is what he will bring more to the crank Kang role, brilliant. But anyway, digress off off that one. But yeah, he plays a really good bad guy. I mean, there are you know you've got the montages in there and stuff, and how it was all kind of orchestrated by him. They have the final fight. And surprise, surprise, Creed wins. But then they have a touching moment, and then they're kind of the realization that obviously there's nothing, you know, they were friends. It was only unfortunately a set of bad circumstances that caused it. And I kind of feel like there was some recognition at the end. And I thought that was good. I thought that was a nice way to end. I think, you know, Rocky has always played for the underdogs. And I think even, you know, th there were circumstances while these friends became rivals but then still had the acknowledgement. I think that's kind of the good with any kind of battle you have within life. It's good to have the acknowledgement of the other person you are there with, um, sort of respect-wise. So, yeah, um, you know, really, really liked it. Um, I rate it 7.5 out of 10. Um, it could have been more. I say I didn't, as you'll see, I don't really have any bad things, but because it's part of a continuation, so you have to kind of see the Rocky films and the Creed films, that's why it's not higher. You know, if it was a standalone film, it, it, it probably would be at least 8.5. I suspect maybe even better. You know, Michael B. Jordan, brilliant, you know, brilliant actor. First directing debut and did really well. I, you know, I went in medium expectations, you know, not to, I come out really, really like, oh, this is really good, kind of wanting more, but I feel like this is, Draw a line in the sand and this is it. Let's end the Rocky and Creed films and have it there. It's a nice ending. It ties everything up. There are a few bits that I haven't mentioned. So if you do go and see this, even though it has spoilers, I've mentioned spoilers. There are stuff I've not mentioned. I try and do lists. So at least there are some surprises, even if you do watch this. But yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of these films, definitely go watch it. If you're not a fan... Um, or you've not seen one or two, I would advise to probably see at least one and two before you see three. But yeah, definitely a good film. Um, I say I've been Cypher Sigma. Um, hope you enjoyed the movie review, and I'll see you in the next one.